Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. So most global equity markets are lower again this morning, um, following another sell-off in Asian markets as uh, people looking at the, uh, the, the broad sell-off in, uh, in uh, euro bonds, uh, which is impacting Japan and the US as a bit of an alarm call. Uh, there could be stronger a stronger sell-off in the other markets as well. And uh, today is the UK general election, which is um, widely, it looks like it's kind of impacting the sterling slightly this morning, uh, as we might be looking at other coalition governments. But as you can see there yesterday, it bounced off potential support at 17.738. So it ended up a, a good bit away from, from that low that it reached yesterday. Uh, but we're drifting down a little bit lower this morning, down about 29 points in the US. So moving on to UK 100, uh, you can get a bit of a flavor of where, where we are right now, looking very, very top heavy. Um, 6906 is potential support. We actually dipped a little bit below that yesterday, ended above it before the end of the session, quite close to that 55 period SMA. And this morning we have already been below it again, but it's still bouncing around 6906. That looks to be the potential pivot level for many traders to be aware of. And that was the uh, high resistance level from, from September last year. So moving on to Japan 25, um, it is pretty much flirting with this uh, potential upwards trend line right here, trading below 55 period SMA. Other technicals begin to look a little bit weak right now with the MACD close to crossing the zero line. So from a technical perspective, we've broken two moving averages and the MACD is crossing the zero line and we're just about to tick below a potential upwards trend line. So uh, a convincing close below that would open up 18,648. And uh, dollar yen, as ever, is trading around about 119, which means you're probably not going to get a huge amount of volatility on Japan 225 unless we see a little bit more action on that FX pair. There's a little bit of economic data due out today. Obviously, we've got non farm payrolls tomorrow, so that might be something that will be the catalyst to get this market moving. Not really much else to say about dollar yen. 119, probably still very much in play. Um, it's been oscillating around here for the last couple of sessions. All the other technical indicators are flattening out. Um, there's not a huge amount of opportunity on that FX pair right now. So moving on to West Texas crude, real strong day yesterday, only to get pushed right back down as crude oil inventories came in uh, pretty high again. Uh, the previous week, people um, had taken the slightly slower acceleration on, on stock distillate as a, as a sign that um, demand was picking up, but now we've seen China is all over the place. Um, actually, there's not a huge amount of demand up there, even though we have seen the prices tick up. Graveyard doji formation was posted yesterday and we're pretty much bang on 59.50 right now, which is going to be acting as a potential support slash resistance level. This is a very ugly candle to have so close to uh, at the top end of an uptrend. So from a technical perspective, everything else is massively overbought. You can see the RSI is overbought, the slow stochastic is overbought. We've almost got a crossover in the MACD with a flattening histogram. Um, so don't be massively surprised if we do see uh, a decent non farm payrolls. Uh, figure tomorrow that could cause a little bit of a spike in the USD, which would pressure West Texas crude. Obviously, Middle East, anything can happen. So, looking at gold, uh, gold reverse coast again below 1186. Uh, there's not really a huge amount happening here. Longer term potential support 1137. Uh, the dollar not really doing a huge amount either to be completely honest it's not a dollar move uh, there's still uncertainty in the market so I'm kind of surprised to see that um, gold is actually ticking down the way that it is just now these formations that you're seeing here this could look like a, a, a very strange head and shoulders formation well you would normally get a head and shoulders formation at the bottom of a downtrend so it doesn't really count incidentally but this would be a classic head and shoulders formation and if we broke below uh, 1137 that would be quite significant but we're not at the top of an uptrend so that's not what it is all the other technical indicators are neutral as well so there's better opportunities out there than looking at gold so moving on to your dollar it's gone mad on the back of uh, this huge sell-off in, in uh, euro bonds which is um the side effect to that is that it's pushing the value of the euro up and obviously people are saying that greece has to reach a deal because the alternative is just so horrible to contemplate apparently um, and that's really pushing up the value of the euro as well and they're very much running out of time to reach a deal uh, running out of money as well apparently so your middle two ranges to be honest one spot 1642 is the next potential resistance if you're looking for another potential pivot you take the tip of that candle right there 1295 was broken resistance now expected to act as short-term support you've got a golden cross in the moving averages 
but your other technicals are over, are overbought. But these don't really count in an uptrend. So the RSI and the slow stochastic only in a sideways moving market. So uh, you can you can not be too alarmed by the, uh, the the huge increase in the trend right there. So finishing up with GBP USD is not going to probably do a huge amount as uh, election day comes in today. Uh, polling closes at 10 p.m. UK time, and the results will probably be known at some point tomorrow morning. Uh, with many commentators obviously talking throughout the night. Again, Golden Cross moving averages, one spot 51.85 is a level to be aware of. Broken resistance, now expected to act as support, but you do have this crossover in the RSI and the slow stochastic. So economic data wise, we do have uh, unemployment claims due today, uh, which could be quite interesting. Uh, obviously you've got the UK general election, and then Friday you've got Chinese trade balance overnight, uh, German industrial production, uh, and then of course massively important non-farm payrolls and everything else. So I better make sure I've got my reoccurring alert set for that. So as ever, make the chart forum part of your layer, same with insights as well, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.